Welcome to this video on the product rule. In this video you're going to learn about when we use the product rule, what the product rule is, and we're going to practice um, taking the derivative of some functions. Okay, so when do we use the product rule? Well, the key word here is the name product, and that word product is just another way of saying multiplying. So for example, if our g of x is this quantity in parentheses 2x to the 6 plus 3 times x squared minus 4, then this is a function that we could use the product rule on. Okay, so the thing that we always think about is when we're trying to find the derivative of a product, so maybe we're trying to find the derivative of some function f times some function g, does this equal the derivative of f times the derivative of g? That would be nice. We're going to see here in a second that that's not true. Okay, so let's, let's look at this one though. We know that this function can quite easily be multiplied out using just a foiling method, and that will allow us to see what the actual derivative should be. So let's FOIL this out. So if I multiply this 2x to the 6 times the x squared, that's going to give me 2x to the 8th. Then we're going to have minus 8x to the 6th plus 3x squared minus 12. So then I just distribute the 3x squared and the minus 4. Okay, so let's clean this up a little. Okay, now I've got my function and we know that this is exactly what it is and I can use just my plain old power rule on this in order to find the derivative. If I take the derivative of the first term, I'm going to have 16x to the seventh. Let's see, that's going to be minus 48x to the fifth plus 6x. Okay. Now, what if we did it using our guess method, that we take the derivative of the first factor times the derivative of the second factor? So we want to see, does this equal, and I told you it's not going to, but does this equal the derivative of the first factor times the derivative of the second factor? So the derivative of 2x to the 6 plus 3, that would be 12x to the 5th and the derivative of the second factor, that's just 2x. So this really is just equal to 24x to the 6, and we can see that these two things are not equal. This does not equal. So we have to have a different rule than the one that we think might be intuitive. Okay, so here we have our rule. If we're trying to find the derivative of f of x times g of x, the product of any two factors or functions, then we take the derivative of the first times the second. So we have the derivative of the first times the second plus just plain f of x times the derivative of the second. So the idea here is that first we take the derivative of our f, and let g stay the same. And then add on to that, this time we let f stay the same, and we take the derivative of our g. So in a sense that each function gets its turn taking the derivative and the other one has to wait. Okay, so we had our derivative. We knew that g prime of x, we saw this just a second ago, was equal to 16x to the seventh minus 48x to the fifth plus 6x. Let's see if we get the same thing using the product rule. Hopefully we do. Okay, so here we're going to have our g prime of x is the name of our derivative. And what we're going to do is I'm going to open a couple of sets of parentheses here. Okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our f, 
or f prime actually. So the derivative of this 2x to the 6 plus 3, that is 12x to the 5th. Okay, we're going to multiply that by our g. Okay, so we're not doing anything to g. g is staying the same as it usually is. Um, it's not ready for it to do its derivative yet. Okay, next we have, this is our f, so it is 2x to the 6th plus 3, and we're multiplying that by the derivative of our g. So our derivative of our g is just um, 2x. So here we have 12x to the 5th, that's the derivative of this first factor, and um, this 2x part, that's the derivative of my second factor. Okay, so let's multiply this out because we want to make sure that this equals this, what we found on the previous part. We want to make sure that these two match. So if I multiply this out, I am going to have 12x to the seventh. Um, 12 times 4, so that's 48x to the fifth. Plus, multiply these two, that's going to be 4x to the seventh, and then plus 6x. Combine like terms, I'm going to have 16x to the 7th minus 48x to the 5th plus 6x. Notice how these things match. They're the same. So we can see that that product rule really does work. So let's look at another example. Okay, so this time um, we have t to the 0.7 minus 4t minus 5 and t to the negative 1 plus t to the negative 2. If we needed to rewrite, we would want to do that before we actually started taking the derivative. In this case, everything's written as powers of t, so we don't have to do any work. Um, the next thing I want to think about is, okay, this is my first function, and this second thing is my second function. Okay. Now, I'm ready to do the derivative. So I'm going to write the name of my derivative. Since my derivative is called y, I'm going to use the um, differential notation for the derivative. And I'm going to have dy. The y is because that matches there. And then the variable in my function is t, so it's going to be dt. Okay, And then, so we're going to have the derivative of our f first. So taking the derivative of this term, or this factor, we're going to have 0.7t and then to the 0.7 minus 1, so that's going to be negative 0 0.3, minus 4 plus 0. That's the derivative of my first factor. Now, next we're just going to have our second factor. So this is my g. And remember, this is my f prime. And then I'm going to add on to that. I'm going to have my f. So this is going to be t to the 0.7 minus 4t minus 5. That's an f. And I'm going to multiply that by my g prime. Okay, so my g prime is going to be negative t to the negative 2, and then minus 2t to the negative 3. Okay, so we're just going to leave our function exactly like that. We're not going to multiply this out and try to simplify. It's not really worth the effort, and um, it's so easy to mess up in the middle, so we are just going to leave it exactly like that. Okay, so let's look at one more. So this time we have h of x, and um, in our first step, we do need to do a little bit of a rewrite because so many of the terms in our h of x are not written as powers of x. So I have h of x equals, I'm going to separate that coefficient from the x. So I'm going to have 2 thirds x to the negative 1 minus x squared. And then here, the square root of x, I'm going to rewrite that as x to the 1 half, and then plus x to the negative 2. Okay, so now I'm ready to do my derivative. So this function here is my f, and the second 
thing in parentheses is my g. So I'm going to have h prime of x equals, remember I'm going to have my f prime, so that's going to look like negative two-thirds x to the negative two minus two x, and then I'm going to multiply that by my g, so that g just stays the same, I'm not doing the derivative yet, whoops, I just said that and then I started doing the derivative. The g just stays the same, so I'm going to have x, x to the one-half plus x to the negative two. Add on to that, now I'm just going to have my f, I'm not doing the derivative here, just plain old f, I have two-thirds x to the negative one minus x squared, and then I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of my g. So this is my g prime, and that was just my plain old f. Okay, so my g prime is going to be one half x to the negative one half minus two x to the negative three. Okay, and again, we're not going to do any simplification. We're going to leave it just like that. So watch for some more examples on the product rule in another video.